technical interviews suck, but they suck a lot less if number one you've seen the questions before and number two you can answer questions using mental models in this video i will go over five senior front-end interview questions that me or my mentees got and five mental models that you can use to answer these questions so you don't freeze in your next interview and get closer to that offer stage number one explain how code splitting works code splitting it's breaking up your application bundle into smaller chunks that can be lazy loaded instead of loading the whole thing at once but how does it really work under the hood for that we need to understand our first mental model the dependency graph based on your import the module bundle creates a dependency graph they take all your code and put it together in a tree like structure because all our code is there we can now split it by identifying different sections of this tree that can actually be packaged independently and this is what code splitting is it's literally just separating that big bundle into smaller independent bundlers that can be lazy loaded or loaded on demand and that leads us to the next senior front-end mental model dynamic imports we talked already about static imports but we also can actually use imports inside our code as functions what happens under the hood when we do that is that we are actually going to the server to get that bundle and whenever that arrives from the server we can then execute we get the content of the module as a return to that promise back to our original question code splitting it's splitting our main bundle in smaller chunks that can be lazy loaded using dynamic imports now let's move on with number Number two, explain the rehydration process. Rehydration is basically making server rendered HTML interactive by attaching event listeners to it and rendering the component structure that corresponds to it. But why do we need to do this? Well, that gets us to our first mental model, which is client side rendering. Like any good love story, it starts with a client and a server. The client requests a website. The server sends back an index HTML. In the index HTML, there's a reference to the bundle.js, which gets requested and loaded up in the client. And now the module starts we render our application which usually takes quite a while we basically call render our route if this would be react and we basically wait the problem is while you're waiting that's how the application looks like this also called the white screen of the head it's what your users hate and it was popularized by windows now we are hipsters in 2024 and we used server-side rendering here things are pretty much the same but not really we do have a client and we ask for the html but this time we get a fully rendered html because we render on the server that takes a bit of time but it's definitely faster than our client we still have to get our bundle after we show something to the user so they will see the web page but can't really interact with it we download our bundle we parse it and then we run hydrate root and this is where we take the existing server side and the html and attach it to the component structure we render on the client on to number three in which order the following will be printed in the console you can definitely try to guess this but it's a lot easier if you know the next mental model that we're going to talk about which is the event loop how does it really work well we have a call stack and an event loop that pretty much tries to execute everything in the call stack once that stack is empty it will go to the micro task queue and try to pick the next thing in the queue once the micro task queue is empty it will actually go to the task queue and pretty much re-render the ui when it finished the work and keeps doing that until the end of time now how does this apply to the code we've seen before well let me explain so we're going to have some synchronous code that will go straight into the call stack and probably will be executed then we have our set timeout this one does not get executed immediately it will go to the task queue and then promise resolve which goes to the micro task queue finally another piece of synchronous code straight into the call stack and executed immediately and now our call stack is empty so let's give you we got number one executed then number four but now we're going to look for something to do there's nothing to do so we will look at the micro task queue and get number three which is the resolve from our promise and finally number four not bad now if you want more interview questions check out the link in the description for the free technical assessment let's go on with number four explain css in js before we get there we need to understand this real css problem and if you're working with component frameworks like react imagine we have two components they both reference the same class and then both add different styles to that class well if they both declare the css class we will end up having conflicting css properties and nobody would really know how would this look like in production the solution css in js basically with css in js we write our css inside javascript files now that gets parsed and then finally the module bundler like 
Webpack will generate a unique class name and add our CSS to the head of the document and then finally add that class to the corresponding element all done under the hood magically by our module bundler and this guarantees that there's unique classes for every component and there's no CSS conflict on to number five what does defer do to a script tag you can go ahead and try to memorize it but then there's also a sync and there's also module when it comes to script tags and good luck memorizing all those what if I told you you can actually explain all of them with one single mental model and that is the critical rendering path if you google it you will find something like this which to be honest doesn't really help much so let's actually see it in action but well, whenever you go into a web page the browser will fetch that HTML and start parsing it in parallel it will also start parsing our CSS pretty much all the CSS we have in the head tag if there's any synchronous JavaScript like normal JavaScript tags it will also try to build those three to produce the DOM the document object model in the CSS form basically the CSS tree with all our styles applied to our components it will then combine both of those into a render tree then it will go to a layout phase where it figures out the sizes of everything and finally painting it and this is where the first contentful paint happen so basically we can add the defer tag to our script and that means it will basically get downloaded but then paused until that first render is done and executed afterwards we also have a sync where we download the code and randomly execute it whenever we can first in parallel to the render process and module which is by default deferred but you might have different modules so you need to do different downloads and then finally execute it after the first contentful paint if you want even more interview questions check out the two videos i link up here this was bogdan from the senior dev and this is the end of the transmission